Hi everyone, welcome to the MathMagic channel. Today we cover modular arithmetic. Now modular arithmetic can be used in math Olympiad questions. If you have a question where you're looking for the last digit of 2017 to the power 2014 and it's it looks really hard but actually all you need to do is to know a little bit about uh, modular arithmetic and you'll be okay with those so hopefully by the end of this introduction you're able to do slightly easier types of questions which have to do with modular arithmetic and in part two of the video we'll um, work on some harder questions okay let's jump right in So the best way to go about this is to think about how we actually count with uh, mods. So if you had 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no rocket science, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So if we were to try and do this in, say, mod 4, for example, now we don't have to work in mod 4, that's just one of the mods that you can use, um, every multiple of 4 will become a 0. And so if you were to count to 10, it would go a little bit like this. It would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 0. And so 5 is 1 more than a multiple of 4. So 5 would be a 1, and 6 would be a 2, and 7 would be a 3, and 8 becomes again a 0. And then 9 would be a 1, and 10 would be a 2, and so on and so forth. So in this sense, when you count in mod 4, there is no number bigger than 4 that exists. And the cool thing about this is that if you think about what's left over, when we think about a number like 9, a number like 9 is a 1 mod 4. And so <clears throat> the remainder when you divide 9 by 4 is 1. So if you were to do 9 divided by 4, you could say that that is equal to 2 remainder 1. And in terms of modular arithmetic, 9 is simply congruent to 1 mod 4. So we don't say equal, we say they're equivalent. So 9 is it's kind of like a 1 if you were to count in mod 4. So I think the best thing to do is to just look at some questions. Uh, I'll put these questions in the descriptions. So if you'd like to try them first and maybe pause the video and try them on your own, or if you'd like to see a couple of them first, like see how we do them and then stop the video and then go ahead and do the rest on your own, that's totally fine. Uh, but maybe do the, the first couple with me and then try the other ones uh, by yourself. So find the mod for residues of each of the following. And a big shout out to AOPS because these worksheets are taken from Art of Problem Solving. Uh, they're a great website if you're preparing for a Math Olympiad. So this is always good to have uh, some nice resources. So when we look at 17, uh, so 17 mod 4, 17 is going to be congruent to a 1 because it's one more than 16, and we're talking about mod 4, so I don't need to write uh, mod 4, but I'm just saying 17 is congruent to 1 because 16 is a 0. And then 18 is congruent to a 2. So then you can say, okay, well, 17 times 18, uh, 17 times 18, that's going to be congruent to 2 times 1, which is 2, and then this is in mod 4. Okay, so 2 mod 4. So similar for question B, 523 times 421. Now, in order for a number to be in the false times tables, we have to look at the last two digits, so 23 and 21. 500 is definitely divisible by 4. So 23 is 3 more than 20. So 23, this is going to be congruent to a 3, mod 4. And 21 is going to be congruent to a 1, mod 4. So this is going to be congruent to a 3, mod 4. So we can say this is 3. And again, we're talking about mod 4. We're not saying that it's equal to 3. But if you were to divide this number by 4, you will get a 3. Okay, 15 to the power of 15. Now this could be a really hard question. If you were to try and plug this into your calculator, your calculator will probably get it. But some numbers to the power like 100 or 200, your calculator would run out of, um, would run out of memory. Here 15 is quite interesting because it's actually a 3 mod 4. So it's like we do 3 to the power of 15, but that's super awkward. So we don't do that. There's a nice little trick here. We say that 15 is congruent to negative 1. Yes, you can use negative numbers. So a 3 and a negative 1 are going to be the same. And I'd like you to think about that for a second. So we're always going to try and use numbers like 1 and negative 1 when we use modular arithmetic. So this is the same as negative 1 to the power of 15. And negative 1 to an odd power is going to be negative 1. 
So the answer here is negative one mod four. But of course, we don't want to leave it like that because negative one is actually three. So we're going to say that this is equal to three. So the last digit, if you were to do 15 to the power of 15 and divide it by four, the last digit would be a three. And you can check that with your calculator. OK, so for question D here, uh, 120 is a zero, right? So this is the same as saying one times two times three, which is going to be a six. And six is going to be congruent to a two, because remember, we don't have numbers like six. We don't have numbers bigger than four. A four is a zero, a five is a one, and a six is going to be a two mod four. So we can say that this is a, a two mod four. So the remainder would be a two. 100 factorial, now for those of you who don't know, 100 factorial, that means 100 times 99 times 98 times dot, 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 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now this is a humongous number, huge, absolutely huge, and um, pretty impossible to stick in, in into a calculator in your mind or do anything with. Luckily enough, it's 100 times 99 factorial. And 100, well, if you were to think about what 100 is mod 4, that's going to be congruent to a 0, because 100 is a multiple of 4, so it's a 0, times 99 factorial. And so 99 factorial times a 0 in modular arith arithmetic is also going to be a 0, so we can say this is equal to 0, and then again mod 4. So why is it 0? because this will definitely be a multiple of four. If you think about the number 100, it's got a lot of fours in it already. It's actually got like a two and a two, so it's got two squared. So it's already got like a multiple of four. You work with 98, uh, 98's also got some twos in it, 96 has got some twos in it. So every even number, so it's very, very, very rich in fours and definitely that number at the end, when you do the whole operation, 100 times 99 times 98, all the way to three times two times one, you'll get something that is a multiple of four. It's definitely divisible by four, and therefore it's a zero, mod four. Okay, so one times three times five times seven times nine. We could say that this is a one times perhaps a negative one times perhaps another negative one. No, a five can be a one, one second. A five can be a one, a seven can be a negative one, and then a nine can be a one. So we'll have a one, a negative one, two negatives make up a positive. So this is going to be equal to one. Um, so we say congruent to one mod four. So mod four, this is congruent to one and therefore that's just one. So let's see if we can do some slightly harder ones. Okay, so this is getting pretty interesting here. 514 times 891. At first glance, 514 is a little bit tricky to deal with because uh, we don't know if it's a multiple of 4 or not. You could uh, multiple of 11 or not. You could divide it by 2. So it would be like 257. But I'd like to draw your attention to the 891. There is something pretty uh, interesting about this number. If you were to do 25 times 11, you could say that that's 2 plus 5, which is 7, and say 275. This is a trick to multiply numbers by 11. So you can add the two digits and stick the number in the middle. I'll give you another example. If you're to do 18 times 11, this is going to be 1 plus 8 is 9, 198. And so perhaps you recognize here when you look at 891 that if you did 81 times 11, what's 8 plus 1? It's 9. So this would be 891. So really, the 891 is 81 times 11. And you could see that if you knew the trick to multiply numbers by 11. So we could say that this is 514 times 81 times 11. And if it's a multiple of 11, when you divide it by 11, there won't be a remainder. So the remainder will be 0. So this is congruent to a 0 mod 11. And this is okay, so the answer is 0 mod 11, there's no remainder. This works if you know the trick for 11s. Okay, this next question here. The remainders when three positive integers are divided by 5 are 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so let's imagine that a number has a remainder of 1. <clears throat> it could be a number like 6. 6 might have a, a remainder of 1. 
and then a number that has a remainder of two when you divide it by five might be uh, a seven. So you could have a six, you could have a seven, you could have an eight, you could have three other numbers. You could have 11, 12, 13. Now you might not need to multiply these numbers. You can just multiply the residues. So if you, if you, if you were to find the product of these, so you could say product. So the product, you could use the remainders and say that it's going to be one times two times three, which is a six. And we're going to work with a six, but mod five, because we're trying to see what happens when we when we mod five it. And this is going to be congruent to a one. OK, so this question is pretty interesting. And this is the kind of question that you expected to find in a math Olympiad paper. Find the remainder when 317 times five to the power 51 is divided by six. So divided by six means we're looking at mod six. And if we're looking at mod six, well, five is a negative one and 317. Well, I would encourage you to say that um, it's 300 plus 17 uh, multiplied by five to the power 51. And so 300 plus 17, well, 300 is a zero because it's a multiple of six and 17 is one less than 18. 18 would be a zero as well, right? 18 would be a zero because it's a multiple of six. So when you do 300, which is a zero plus 17, which is negative one, all of this will be negative one mod six. So that's the 317. 317 is one less than 318 and 318 is divisible by six. And this is multiplied by negative one because five is also negative one. It's one less than six to the power 51. And so a negative one times a negative one is going to be a one. Now, a negative to an odd power is a negative number. So this is going to end up being negative one times negative one, which is one. And this is mod six. Remember, again, not to say equal, but congruent to or equivalent to. And then this is OK, right? So there's a remainder of one if you were to do this operation. Now, this is where modular arithmetic is so incredible because your calculator would not be allowed to do that. I mean, it would be it would not be able to perform this operation like five to the power 51 is way too big. So at least uh, using modular arithmetic, you're able to do something um, that your calculator cannot. So that's pretty interesting. Math is pretty cool, right? Uh, OK, so let's see for our last question today. John has 73 bags, each of which has a quarter, a dime, a nickel and a penny. Now, if you're not sure, a quarter is 25 cents, a dime is 10 cents, a nickel is 5 cents and a penny is 1 cent. So we're saying that he has 73 bags and in every bag there's 41 cents. 41 cents per bag. OK, so. He takes those bags to the bank and exchanges all of the money for some number of dollar bills. So these are like 100 cents, dimes, so 10 cents and pennies. If the number of pennies John gets after exchanging the money with the bank is less than 10, how many pennies does he have? So you could do 41 times 73 and see how much you have left over after you've taken out all the multiples of 100 and all the multiples of 10 because a dollar bill will, will be a hundred, right? And then uh, a dime will be a multiple of 10. Notice there's no quarters. So we're really interested to see, like if I was to take everything and put everything in dollars and dimes, then how many pennies would I have left over? We're just interested to see what the very last digit looks like. And sure enough, modular arithmetic is gonna help us here. And since we're looking at multiples of 10 and a hundred, it would make sense to use mod 10 here. Because if you were to use mod 10, you would get rid of all the dimes and by extension, all the dollars because, you know, 10 groups of 10 would give you a dollar. So if you were to do 41 times 73, so there's 73 bags with 41 cents in them and then change that into say that this is congruent to a one times a three, but this is mod 10, then you'll be left with three pennies exactly. So whatever happens, once you got rid of all the dimes and all the dollars, you're left with three pennies, which are just hanging around, which is just the residue after you've taken out all the multiples of 10 before that. So multiples of 10 meaning mod 10. Uh, and so you can say three, three pence or three pennies. And that's the answer to the last question.
So thanks for sticking around and doing this uh, quick bit of work with us on modular arithmetic. I hope this was useful to you. Remember to like and subscribe to the Mathemagic channel so we can bring you more content. Uh, we're going to put out more Math Olympiad materials this year. So stick around for 2024 as uh, big things are coming for Mathemagic. Thank you so much and we shall see you on the next video. Bye-bye.